In a normal vineyard setting, deep tillage is typically conducted prior to planting. The objective of the deep tillage operation is to loosen the subsoil by separating soil aggregates and infusing more air into the soil in order to reduce the soil's hardness and its bulk density. If done properly, the deep tillage process will allow for rapid root exploration and exploitation of the soil to the depth of the tillage. Soil responds differently to the application of a shear or compressional force based on the water content of the soil. The major potential issue is that if the soil is too moist, the tillage shank will not separate the aggregates, but will instead compress the entire soil mass and squeeze air from the soil instead of adding air to the soil. This process of compacting a moist soil with deep tillage is called puddling. Puddling, for instance, is used in rice production to seal the bottom of a rice paddy so that the water does not drain from the soil. Obviously, this is not the intended consequence of deep tillage for replanting wine grape vineyards, but it frequently happens because the soil is not properly prepared to be sufficiently dry for tillage and the soil moisture is not monitored. Uh, for the deep tillage process, we, they're typically used two different types of implements. One is a straight shank, the other is a wing shank. This is a wing shank, and so you can see essentially what they've done is they've welded these wings onto a straight shank. Um, the advantage of this, especially in alluvial soils or valley floor soils, is that the wings lift the soil up and then drop it off the back. So it separates aggregates without pulverizing them. The um, shank will go in, this will be lowered on this pivot, it'll go down to three feet, and then there will still be about a 15 to 20 percent slope from the front to the back. So the soil slides up this slope and drops off. So you end up with aggregates that are separated but not actually pulverized. The other major advantage of this type of wing shank is that the vector force of the tillage operation is up. On a straight shank, if you had just this shank without the wings, the vector force is sideways into the profile and consequently it's trying to push against hundreds of tons of earth. With this, what it does, it, because it's lifting, it can lift the soils up and consequently infuse air and therefore allows more and more air into the soil during the tillage process as those aggregates are separated. It allows a lot of air in between the aggregates. This is a straight shank or conventional shank. As you can see, it's relatively straight. It's got a little bit of an elephant tusk point on it, but this shank, because it doesn't have any wings on it, it doesn't have the lift. So all of the vector force of this shank is going laterally into the soil. And that's a disadvantage for many soils. And this shank really is best used on soils with very hard subsoil, bedrock, or slightly fractured bedrock. Because where this kind of shank will pierce bedrock, the wing shank that we saw earlier actually will sometimes just skip across be the bedrock uh, or skate across the bedrock because it can't pierce it. So frequently on alluvial soils that are relatively loose, we'll use the wing shank. On mountain soils where we have to get in and upset the bedrock, we'll use the straight shank, at least in the first pass to uh, fracture the rock, and then sometimes come back and do the cross grip with either another pass with the straight shank or a pass with the wing shank. The tillage process is a 30-year decision. The tillage depth will frequently define the future root zone. Therefore, the root zone depth can be pre-prescribed by the tillage depth to allow the vines to have adequate water availability pre-berry set, but allow the vineyard manager to manage water availability to the vines with mid-season and late-season irrigations. Most importantly, it's imperative that the soil moisture be monitored to the entire depth of the intended tillage to ensure that the soils are sufficiently dry to till without puddling the soil. First, plant an aggressive cover crop in the fall before the summer of deep tillage to draw out soil moisture. Start measuring the soil moisture in the midsummer and follow its dryness through the summer. 
Conduct the tillage when the soil at the deepest depth is drier than the plastic limit. If the soil is not drier than the plastic limit at the preferred depth by the end of the summer, then deep till only to the depth at which the soil is sufficiently dry. It is better to have a slightly shallower rooting depth than to have a puddled subsoil that can give you rooting and drainage problems for decades to come. I hope these videos have been helpful for you to assess both your soil structure as well as assess soil moisture prior to deep tillage so that your deep tillage operation is as effective as possible. Mm -hmm.